Oil remains a very important commodity globally, and with its price subdued, we need to ask the question, who's next to fall? You came here for the truth. Let's answer that question right away. Algeria to lean on central bank to plug deficit amid oil slump. So we can see with the price, which has been subdued for quite some time now, that countries which are exporting oil are suffering. Their currency is devalued, their exports are really hurting, and Algeria is the next one in line to lose the fight. So instead of going towards the IMF, going with the supranational entities, they have decided to actually engage in monetary easing and follow the Federal Reserve, the ECB, the Bank of Japan, and others. And it seems like that's a smarter way than to go ahead with the IMF, because ultimately, as they say in this article, that they will not be able to pay it back. That's just the way it is. So what are they going to do? Well, they are going to exhaust all of their foreign exchange reserves. And instead, they have decided, hey, let's just print money like everyone else is doing. Nobody can tell us any different. So let's just print it into infinity and everything was going to be okay. Well, that's not the case. And we'll probably see Algeria fall before a lot of these other bigger countries. And that's just going to give us a crystal ball into the future to determine what's going to happen when you have these very dangerous policies that have never been done before, unless in a failure. All right, the S&P 500. We're looking at the basically earnings per share versus the S&P. And when you see this, the blue line being the S&P, which continues to rise and Lo and behold, earnings per share continues to decline. That's because it doesn't matter anymore. We don't want the real economy. All we need is to have central banks buying up shares and everything is just fine. This here, the global debt, doesn't matter how you slice it, doesn't matter the calculation you use, what numbers you use, what formulas, we need to know that global debt is rising. And if you believe that debt is simply non-existent, we owe it to ourselves, there's no repercussions, well, we have many hist uh, historic examples of why this is false. But just look at all the countries today suffering under debt. Look at individuals suffering under their debt. And many people believe that nothing will happen. But just look at all the countries, all the states, all the cities, which end up doing things like entitlement reforms. So they previously owed money to, let's say, a pension fund or something of that sort. And they end up in getting rid of or at least reducing the amount that they pay out. And that should be worrisome for a lot of people. And you should understand that they do have repercussions. Emerging market bond universe. All this chart basically shows you is that they are continuing to increase at a rapid clip, and this is going on since the year 2000. All right, so the SMP's gain since 2009 tops 1949 to 1956 run to become the third strongest ever. Congratulations, SMP. You are doing so well at this time. Many people don't worry about this, but I have a difference of opinion. All you need to know is that we are going very, very quickly to become the longest streak in history. So eventually it will take that crown. Correction risk has increased to greater than 45%. I would say it's higher, but this is actually within the uh, next three months. I don't know about timing wise, but obviously the percentage should be higher probability of a correction beginning within the next three months so we'll see where that actually goes i mean timing never seems to be correct wide dispersion between asset price inflation and real economy inflation look at this here asset prices on the 
the left hand side and real economy prices so one thing would be the GDP so the first red tick that you're seeing there is the GDP compare that to on the left hand side you'll see the S&P 500 a grand dispersion in between the two a chasm has formed and this is ultimately a failure of the whole monetary system that shows you it, it proves it right here in this chart. Everything on the left, asset prices, everything on the right, things that matter. But of course, people don't look at it that way because they probably have a lot riding on it. S&P performance is like a, basically a graph showing you a similar thing what I had shown you. Just showing you that it's chugging along, basically no blips along the way, continuing to increase because the central banks are buying up the shares. S&P is at a record high. That's the green line. You're seeing that red line going down. Well, if I scroll for you, the U.S. hard economic data is actually at an eight-year low. So despite the fact that we have record highs on the S&P and everyone's cheering it, the actual data is showing that the economy is not doing well. And in fact, it is at an eight-year low at this moment. Doesn't bother anybody, apparently. But what else is new? And last but not least here, bear market since 1929. Uh, you know, I just wanted to show you this to just give you some relevance. And when you see that in 1929, for example... There were multiple drops throughout the Great Depression. Um, total from the top to the bottom, I believe it was 89%, but they calculated it based on, you know, where it had gone up and then gone down and sort of dead cat bounced and everything else. But you'll see drops of 34%, 59%, and so on. But if I scroll for a moment down to the bottom, you'll see October 2007 towards 2008, 50, almost 51%. That is a serious drop. So just imagine where the S&P is at today if it dropped 50%. So if, even if we had a crash that was equivalent to what happened last time, which supposedly the Federal Reserve was there, supposedly all the banking system was very safe and the structure was there, and yet still the S&P drops 51%. Put that same thing into perspective today. Yes, everything is worse, but let's just pretend for a moment that it's equivalent. A 51%, that would be devastating for most people, for the pension funds, for everything else involved. So that's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. When you subscribe to me you're going to get notified of all my videos which i post basically every single day so you definitely want to make sure that you are keeping up with this i cover the maximum amount of data in the minimum amount of time that is my goal and i hope that all of you appreciate that very much i'm on uh, youtube i'm also posting to steam it all the links for everything you need to know are in the description of this video and all my videos that's all take care